and see his his horns. Yeah, you see it. You see it. Okay, so we have all the setup, and I'll give you guys a chance to catch up to me here. Um, vertical line, a vertical line, horizontal line across the page. That's our principal axis. Draw the mirror somewhere on it. It's convex, so it curves away. Okay, vertical line that touches the mirror. That shows where the reflection point is. Okay, then my focal length is two, uh, sorry, is four centimeters. Again, that's from the problem. That's just not magic. Okay, so the focal point four centimeters away. I put it on the curved side. The focal point always goes on the curved side. C is always double F. So F was four, so C is eight. It's called the center of curvature. It's just another point. Um, we need two points on here, and one of them is C. But it's always double F. I guess I can give you a better explanation than that. Um, C is, if you turn the mirror into a complete circle, C is the center. So that's, it is actually a thing. It's not just something I made up. <laughs> Which I know, that's what a lot of what I tell you to do is. It's like, oh, Mr. B just made that up for us to do. Not this time. Um, I like how I just insinuated that the rest of the time it is. Anyway. We go to um, college, we actually know nothing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, so we got this here, and this is my object. Notice that everything absolutely has to be to scale. So you have to draw two centimeters has to be two centimeters. Four centimeters has to be four centimeters. Um, you can always turn it into centimeters. So if I give you a problem in inches, you could do centimeters instead of inches. If I gave you a problem in miles, you could do millimeters and set. You can do any scale as long as it's consistent. I'm going to try to give you ones that actually make sense, though. Okay. All right. Any questions before we move on? Okay. Let's do this sucker. So there are three lines you have to draw. The first line you draw is parallel to the principal axis and then reflects through... F. The second one you draw goes through F and then reflects parallel, and the third one you draw goes through C. So let's start with the one that's parallel. So what I do is I draw a line that's parallel to the principal axis, so it's parallel. They always start at the top of my object, and it goes to that vertical line, not to the mirror. So I'm going to draw a line that goes from here to there. It then reflects through F. So what I do is I touch that part on the mirror, well, that vertical line, and I go through F, and I line it up. And remember, my reflection I do as a dashed line just to show the difference. You don't have to do that, but that's what I do. Okay? And I do it as a dashed line. Now, it reflects backwards the way it came, but it's important to go behind the mirror, too. But the actual light is traveling this way. So the light hits and reflects away. Because this is a diverging uh, mirror, so it spreads the light out. So the light goes away instead of towards. Okay, there's the first one. Okay, second one. Second one goes through F and then reflects parallel. This is where it gets a little tricky. So I line it up with F. But I'm not actually going to make it to F. You'll see. I'm drawing to the mirror. Notice how it gets stuck at that vertical line before it gets to F? So you just stop there. And then you go parallel back. Okay, and the last line is always the easiest one, and that is the line that goes through C. So all you do is you just line it up with C, and it's a straight line that just goes between those two points. So it goes to the mirror, and then reflects straight back.
Okay. And you should be able to see the point where they intersect, which is right here. So this is my object. This is my image. So notice a few things about the image. So first of all, notice the image is on the wrong side of the mirror. It's on the right side instead of on the left. Okay, that'll tell us what kind of image here in a second. Um, notice it's right side up and not upside down. In the previous example we got, it was upside down. Um, notice that it's smaller than, um, and notice that, again, the reason I do the, let, the light on both sides of the mirror is because sometimes it ends up on that right side. And so by doing it this way, I was able to see that. Okay, so the last step is to measure the things it asks you for. And it wanted to know, is uh, H-I, D-I, and if it was real or virtual? Okay, H-I is very easy to measure. I just get my ruler and I measure it. And this is one and a half centimeters. So H-I, 1.5 centimeters. DI is also pretty easy to do. You just put it at the vertical line where the mirror meets that, and you measure out from there. Okay, that one is also one and a half. It's just coincidence. Don't assume it should always be the same. And if you know what real and virtual are, it's also pretty straightforward to do. Real are always going to be on the left side of the mirror. Real are always going to be upside down. This is on the right side of the mirror, and it is right side up, so this is virtual. Oh, I made one mistake. Um, since this is on the wrong side of the mirror, DI is a negative 1.5. That's, like, that's a super minor, easy little mistake to make. I don't even know it that I would necessarily take off points on that on the test. I would probably just point it out. But it should be negative in this case because it's on the wrong side of the uh, mirror. Likewise, if HI is upside down, that should be negative. But this is right side up. So, Okay.